in this video I thought we'd have a bit of blues and it's been a while since I've done a blues based lesson and you know me I like to mix up the kind of styles and genres that I look at in my videos and I know that there are quite a few of you out there who are into my more blues based videos and I like to keep everybody happy. Now on one level this video is basically going to be me sharing with you some of my tastiest blues licks. So if you're in the need of more blues licks, if you want to improve your blues vocabulary, then I hope you enjoy this video. But on another, perhaps more important level, this video is going to be about the last four bars of the 12 bar blues form. And the reason I want to talk about that is because I think it's those four bars that is the most challenging part of the blues to solo over. And I know that many players struggle with it and they struggle to navigate those changes and to find anything interesting to say at that point in a blues. So I'm going to be talking about the theory of it. I'm going to be talking about phrasing, note choice, so scales and arpeggios. And of course, there are going to be plenty of licks as well. So let me begin by playing a bit of blues for you just by way of introduction. And then we'll get into the lesson proper. this video specifically is going to be about the last four bars of the 12 bar form and that's not to say that the preceding eight bars are not important or not interesting it's just to say that for most people those first eight bars are a little bit easier to solo over and I think if you know your minor pentatonic scale you can get away with using that throughout the first eight bars and it's going to sound cool and you know maybe if you want to be a little bit cheeky you can get some major pentatonic in there as well but it's those last four bars where players tend to struggle. And if you can really nail those changes in the last four bars, it really marks you out as a good blues player, I think, and as someone who really knows what they're doing. And I may as well begin with a bit of a recap of the theory and of the basic blues form. Now, the basic blues form goes something like this. I realise there are variations and you can sometimes have alternate changes and substitution certainly if you get into jazz blues then things can get quite a bit more complex but i'm not talking jazz blues today i'm talking blues blues so a fairly standard 12 bar blues would go something like this let's do this in the key of a just to keep things nice and simple so we would start on the one chord generally you've got four bars on the one chord unless you want to do that quick change in bar two where you go to the four chord and then back again to the one chord uh, then in bars five and six we're going up to the to the four chord for two bars then we're back to the one chord for two more bars that's the first eight bars then it's in the last four bars where the changes come a bit more thick and fast so we'll tend to go to the five chord in bar nine and then bar ten it will be the four chord and then in the last two bars, you've more often than not got some kind of turnaround, which, as the name suggests, it turns the whole thing around. It kind of sets you up to go once more through the entire 12 bar form. And this turnaround can be played by the band, played by the people accompanying the soloist. It can be played by the soloist. It can be played by both. And this is where there are quite a few different variations, but a simple last couple of bars of the 12 bar form might just be a bar on the one and then a bar on the five chord and the five chord serves to set you up to go round again you might get something like this so one four one five very often you get things like this Again, it's really just one going to the five, but you're approaching that five chord by one fret above or one fret below. 
And it's important that you're aware of these chord changes and that you've really internalized them. You know them on the guitar, but you've also got the sound of them in your ears. And then as a soloist, you're going to be able to outline these changes to signal them in your note choice. And that's where it's really going to sound like you're playing the changes for these last four bars. And it's going to sound like you really know what you're doing. So that's what the rest of this video is going to be about. And I'm going to give you five licks or phrases over these last four bars. And you've got a choice. You can learn these licks or phrases note for note. That's absolutely cool. Um, and I think it can be valuable to do that, just to learn some phrases by rote and make them a part of your playing. But if you're a more advanced player, yes, it can still be nice to learn some licks and have some more vocabulary in your lick bag. But more important, I think, is to absorb the ideas, the concepts behind these phrases, and then you'll be able to make them your own and you'll be able to improvise with them. And I think in the long run, that's a more valuable lesson to take from this video. Let's take a look at lick number one then. Uh, I suppose none of these are technically licks. They're all complete four bar phrases. So let's take a listen to how this one goes. And I'm going to play this along to the backing track, I think. So just give me a moment to set that up. So I'm starting quite simple with this one. And my approach for most of these ideas is to try and play the changes. So I'm going to try and hit some chord tones, so play some of the notes in the chords as they go by and describe the chord changes. Now, you don't have to do this all of the time. Of course, some of the time you can just play the A minor pentatonic and it's going to sound cool. And I will sometimes do that by way of contrast with this more chord tone type approach. But if all you're doing is noodling around the A minor pentatonic then quite quickly it's going to get boring. So that's where this approach comes in. All of these ideas are in the key of A minor and they're all going from the five chords. So this is bar nine of the twelve. And all I'm thinking about in this example is hitting the root of each chord as it goes by. So you don't have to get more complicated than that some of the time. And just hitting those roots deliberately is a simple and very effective way of just signalling those chord changes. So I'm opening up with this idea. So I'm thinking A minor pentatonic here, but I'm emphasising the root note of the chord that we're on. So we're on the five chord here, and I'm bending this D up to an E. That's the root of our five chord. And I'm continuing like this. So it's more A minor pentatonic stuff, but this time I'm landing on the root of the four chord, so the D chord. And I'm continuing with this phrase, which is actually very similar to the previous phrase, but I'm playing it down an octave. And I'm also ending on the A note, so I'm now hitting the root of the one chord. So see how simple but effective that is. I'm hitting the root of the five, then the root of the four, and then the root of the one. And then I'm ending with what I suppose is quite a stock turnaround lick. So this is kind of a preset lick, which I will play more or less exactly this same way every time you hear this kind of thing in all kinds of different blues players. So it's just a kind of Chuck Berry thing. Coming down the A minor pentatonic. And I've got a C to a C sharp hammer on this time, hitting the third of the one chord. And then I'm finishing with this. So an A and then chromatically approaching this E note here which again is a root note. It's the root of the five chord, which uh, takes us back to the top again. So this, uh, just on its own, is a nice, effective turnaround leg. So all of that put together slowly sounds like this.
Example number two sounds like this. And again with this example I'm thinking about chord tones but for this particular phrase I'm thinking about the third of each chord as it goes by. So I'm starting off with this phrase. So that's the phrase that fits the five chord and I've got this nice move all happening on the B string. This is something that I find myself using quite a lot. So I've got the root note here and then this F sharp is the second and if you bend that up you're going to hit the third of, of the five chord, that's a G sharp. So a really effective phrase, a really easy one to find and to use I think. Um, sometimes I'm just including that note there, this C sharp at the sixth fret on the third string. And once you've got that basic idea, that basic concept, it's very easy just to vary the rhythm a little bit and make it into something original. So that's our five chord phrase. Now, obvious thing to do, but again, a very effective thing to do, just move that down two frets and play the same thing. And that becomes our four chord phrase. So it works in exactly the same way. You've got your root note second and bending it up to the third. So just by moving from here to here you can really clearly outline the chord changes. And then I kind of resolved things to the one chord like this. So this time coming to the, the flat third of the one chord. So that's kind of a nice bluesy thing to do. It doesn't always have to be the major third, it can be the minor third or sometimes in between the two actually for that more bluesy sound. And then I've got another one of these quite stock kind of turnaround licks. It's slightly different to the previous one but it's all based again around the A minor pentatonic or the A blues scale. So. So uh, starting at the fifth fret on the top two strings, just descending down the blues scale, this kind of minor third to major third hammer on, and ending on the E on the root of the five chord. All of that put together slowly. to the next phrase which goes like this. And I suppose this one is a bit of a variation on the previous idea. Again I'm trying to hit the third of each chord and with this one I'm really just moving the same idea up and down the fretboard to fit the chord changes. So I'm kicking off like this. And like with the previous example, the root note of the five chord is under my first finger. And this time I'm bending up to the third from one fret below. And maybe not quite arriving at the third, it's that kind of in between the minor and major third sound, which is a very bluesy thing. So I'm just tweaking that eighth fret note slightly sharp. And coming over onto the top string. Once more bending that 8th fret note. And then for the 4 chord, you can just play exactly the same thing or you can just play a slight variation on it so you could vary the rhythm slightly. easy just to take that idea, vary the rhythm and suddenly you've got a slightly different flavour of phrase. And why not take the same idea to the one chord? So 
And we could do that by playing it up here at the 10th fret. So here's an A note, that's the root of our one chord. And you could play it exactly the same. I think what I actually did was just play a little variation on that phrase and extend it a little bit. So mixing A minor pentatonic, A major pentatonic, there's a bit of blues scale in there as well. Kind of going up the blues scale. And then got a bit of a major pentatonic flavour at the end of the phrase. All of that together. Moving on to idea number four, that goes like this. The first phrase goes like this. And I'm playing out of this nice little zone or box of notes. You've got lots of nice notes to choose from here which fit the sound of the five chords. So I'm thinking E7 and you've got your root, third, fifth and flat seven. There's your arpeggio. And you've got the second there and the flat third. flat seven down there so yeah, really all of those notes are kind of fair game you've got the mixolydian scale and the mixolydian scale with those added chromatics so that's where this phrase is coming from so I'm chromatically going up to hit the major third once again. And then the root. Then I'm moving down two frets. I'm not playing exactly the same idea this time. I'm kind of taking it somewhere else. So, so playing something like that. So now I'm thinking D7. And at the top of that box of notes. Just got a semitone bend. And coming down, it's kind of a mixture of major and minor pentatonics here. And then I'm hitting the third and the root of the one chord. So. Then we've got another quite commonly used turnaround phrase. So A minor pentatonic I'm thinking here, kind of flat five blues scale note, minor to major third, and it ends quite similarly to a previous idea on the root of the five chord. Let me piece all of that together. Right, the fifth and final idea goes like this. Taking a slightly different approach on this one, and it's something I do quite a lot, and that is over the five chord, I like to play the minor pentatonic from the root of the five chord, so E minor pentatonic. And sometimes you have to be a little bit careful playing the pentatonic from the root of each of the chords in a 12 bar. So A minor pentatonic on the one, D minor pentatonic on the four, and so on. It can work, but it can sound a bit weird, like you're changing key on each chord. But I do think that it's very effective to play the E minor pentatonic on the five chord. So that's what I'm thinking here. So I'm really just coming down the E minor pentatonic scale. And I'm thinking about the, what you could call the A form in caged terms of that scale. So I'm starting on this high D and coming down to the root note, the E. So 
that's what I'm doing on the five chord. Then for the four chord, I'm climbing up the neck. And sometimes that's a good thing to do. There's a natural tendency, I think, to go down when you switch to the five chord. That's kind of the obvious thing to do. It does sound good, but you can go the other way. So what I'm doing is hitting some four chord, some D7 chord tones up around the 10th fret. So here I'm really thinking about the D7 arpeggio. And I've done a video a while back on the dominant seventh arpeggio, super useful when you're playing blues. So I'll link to that on screen. That might be worth watching for those of you who are not familiar with some of these shapes. But that's all I'm thinking here, hitting those D7 chord tones. Then we're coming back to the one chord. So I'm back down to kind of home position, fifth position. Root of the one chord. And I'm playing this little sixth shape. So C sharp and A, the third and the root of the one chord. Then I'm hitting the same notes in relation to the four chord. So it's the third and the root of the four chord, D7. Then I've got a bend at the fifth fret on the third string. And ending with that same idea we've had before. We've had it here before. But now I'm playing it down in the open position. All of that phrase put together slowly. So there we go, five what I hope are quite interesting and useful ideas. And we've got lots of notes flying around here, so I'm not expecting everyone to try and learn all of these note for note. Uh, better might be just to take one of them and really learn it well and understand what's going on and make sure you're able to work it into your own playing and come up with your own variations on it. Let's talk gear. And I've got my Les Paul out today, and that doesn't happen as often as perhaps it should. And for one reason or another, I don't really consider myself to be a Les Paul player. I don't know how well it suits my personal style, but it's a beautiful guitar and every time I get it out, it sounds great and I really enjoy playing it. And this particular Les Paul is a 59 reissue and I'm playing it today through my Fender Princeton. It's a reissue Fender Princeton, uh, running that quite clean. And then I've got my J Rocket Archer overdrive pedal switched in as well. So just the clean sound is like this. This is just the Les Paul going straight into the Princeton. It actually sounds pretty good just like that. But if I add the overdrive, just adds a bit more sustain, a bit of dirt as well. So. That's all for this video. If you would like tabs, they are going to be up on my Patreon page as usual. Pay what you like, get your hands on my lovingly put together tabs. I'm also going to put my backing track up there as well if you fancy playing along to that. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video useful. I will see you next time.